All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, very excited to get going into today's lesson. If you've been struggling with anxiety for a long period of time, and if you've been having a lot of uncertainties and doubts about what is really required to get the anxiety under control and how to really handle it, I think today is going to be very powerful for you. Basically, what I'm planning on doing is uh, walking you through in as much detail as I can possibly cover in the time that I have today the exact steps, like basically step by step by step, exactly the checklist that I would be walking through with a client and to try to teach you uh, guys exactly what I would be um, teaching a client and summarizing each one of those steps. And my hope is that if you can at least see like every single step that is required to get the job done, my hope is that you'll actually see that it's very doable, it's very possible, because a big problem that a lot of people have who've been struggling with anxiety for a long period of time is their belief that they can actually get this done. And uh, I by no means believe I've got it all figured out, like I'm not a perfect coach or anything like that. But this particular method I'm going to be walking you through in detail has successfully worked for over 500 people, uh, each of our clients to reduce their anxiety. And everyone's a little bit different. For some people, it works incredibly well. For some people, it still works very moderately well. But the average result that we've gotten with those 513 clients is a 75% reduction in the anxiety. And usually it takes about 90 days to do that. Some people, it takes a little bit less time, um, more like in the 45 to 60 day mark. For some people, it takes a little bit longer, maybe around the four month mark. Uh, but on average, right around 90 days is where most clients get that result. Uh, many clients have used this exact process to get a 100% anxiety elimination in their own words and be able to maintain that long term. Uh, but 75% is become so reliable of a result of what we produce that we now very comfortably provide a written guarantee of satisfaction that people will feel that that has taken place uh, by using this method. So I'm going to be going for about as long as I can um, in the next 30 to 60 minutes. And, uh, you know, we're going to just try to go through as much detail as we possibly can. But granted, keep in mind that this is a 90 day system, a 90 day process that I'm going to be summarizing for you today. So there are going to be a couple of situations where you may have questions. And so you can put those questions inside of the uh, comments. So any of you guys who are joining with us live, go ahead and put that in uh, any questions you have whatsoever in the comments. That way I can answer those live here while you've got my attention. And then if you have additional questions uh, and you're watching the replay with us or joining on the podcast afterwards, just go ahead and uh, let us know, put it in the comments or write into us. And we want to make sure that any single question that you have is answered. So um, don't be shy if you have any questions whatsoever. Okay. Now, basically, uh, I would recommend, by the way, you have paper and pen for this one, because there's a little framework I'm, I'm going to be walking you through. And so here's basically what it entails, right? So whenever I have a brand new client, right, if I've got a, a person who just signed up with us, they're just getting started, there are a series of steps that they need to get through in order for me to feel very, very confident and comfortable that they're going to be able to maintain incredibly good mental health long term without needing my additional help and support, uh, and that they're going to be able to keep that as their new status quo. And there are basically three phases that a client has to go through in that 90-day process. Again, like I said, it's typically a 90-day process. It's a little different for each person. And then inside of each one of those three phases, there are three steps. So you've got a total of nine steps, basically, inside of three phases. Okay, does that make sense to everybody so far? Okay. And by the way, um, can you guys let me know if you can hear me okay? Just let me know in the comments. Just put yes in the comments if you can hear me. If audio video is coming through okay, we've had a couple issues recently, so that'd be helpful to know. Okay. So three phases, and inside of each of the three phases, there are three steps. And the first phase that is required to really get anxiety under control, at least this is the only way I know how to get the job done, okay, is what we call retraining the brain to think positively and feel content by default, okay? So we must retrain the brain to think positively by default and to feel content by default. So first of all, let me define this phase and what that really means. So our goal here is not total perfection. That's unrealistic. Our goal is not, you know, having absolutely no intrusive thought ever, right? Having no negative emotion ever. 
Uh, our goal is not to have a anxiety-free life in terms of lowercase a anxiety. Okay, every human being has lowercase a anxiety, myself included, uh, where you know you'll just have like a little worry about something, right? Every human being has a worry or a fear that pops up here or there, particularly in a brand new environment, uh, particularly in a situation where you should be feeling fearful, like uh, if you almost get in a car accident or if someone that you uh, love legitimately does get sick, right? It would be unreasonable for us to expect that, the, that your mind is not going to have some level of fear or some level of anxiety about that. So when we say anxiety-free and when we help our clients get anxiety-free, it's important to understand that what we're creating for them is a uppercase A anxiety-free lifestyle. And what that means is, number one, you're no longer feeling anxiety in the environments where it no it doesn't make sense to feel anxiety, right? Like you shouldn't be feeling anxiety when you are uh, shopping for groceries, right? Or when you're, um, you know, you shouldn't be feeling debilitating anxiety, at least when you go on a date. You shouldn't be feeling debilitating anxiety when you're on your way to work, okay? Things like that. So if it's anxiety that's showing up in places where there's really nothing to be afraid of, genuinely, that would be uppercase anxiety. Another type of anxiety would be if it's happening in a repetitive cyclical way in an ongoing capacity. So like if you keep having anxieties about your self-worth perpetually, if you keep worrying about what people think about you every day, uh, if you have been trying to be a perfectionist your whole life, right, as long as you can remember, right? If there's something that's been going on for, let's say, over three months, it's a, a pattern of anxiety that's getting in the way of your daily life, then that would be uppercase A anxiety. And that's what we're concerned with, because that's the thing that really limits your quality of life. So to get rid of that, the very first phase, I'm going to remind you again, and you want to write this down, phase one is we're going to retrain the brain to think positively by default and to feel content by default. And inside of that phase, there are three main steps. And so our goal, basically, when I get a brand new client, my goal for them is for them to reduce the anxiety by at least 25% in their first 30 days. And we usually are able to hit that no problem. Like I would say the overwhelming majority of clients get that done, probably 80% plus get that done. Many of them actually get that done within the first two to three weeks. And it really is a byproduct of us teaching them the three main things that uh, comprise anxiety. I'll get into that in just a second. So inside of this first phase, there are three main steps. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna list all three of them because it's easier for me to describe this process by you understanding all three steps because they kind of happen simultaneously. So if we wanna retrain the brain to think positively by default and feel content by default, there's three things we have to do. Okay, so 1A, if you're keeping notes, so phase one, step one, right? So 1A is we must identify every single old pattern that has caused you anxiety. We must, and can someone put this in the comments, please? Okay, so that that way people can keep track. It will greatly help the community. Okay, so step, phase one, retrain the brain to think positively and feel content by default. Step one of phase one, is identify every old pattern that has caused you anxiety, okay? Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, what we have to do is we have to map out. We literally have to map out. We have a whole process of how we do this. And for those of you joining on the replay, you'll be able to see my screen here. So I'm, a, I'm in my um, dashboard where I'm showing you basically all of the lessons that we give our clients. And the very first lesson we call the three causes of all emotions. And so inside of this lesson, basically what we do is we map out very clearly what are the three exact things that are causing you anxiety and that are unique to you. So let me give you a few examples. Some clients have a process where they visualize something bad taking place. So what happens is they're getting ready to drive their car, go to the grocery store, and in their mind, a visualization happens automatically of them you know, getting in a car accident or having a panic attack at the grocery store or something like that. So they have a visualization. And then the second thing that happens is they will have some internal dialogue that will occur, something like, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Okay, we call that an incantation. So they'll have some dialogue. And then third, what will happen is they will do something unique with their physical body, with their physiology. 
So they might start to tighten up their breathing. They might start to hunch over. They might start to fidget. They may start to tense their muscles, for example. They may start to frown. Okay, And all of those things combined are that person's unique pattern of anxiety. Now, not everybody visualizes things, however. Okay, Some people are very susceptible to internal dialogue, especially when it gets really loud or if it becomes very repetitious. Uh, some people don't really associate to either the visualization or the dialogue, but instead for them, the anxiety feels very kinesthetic, meaning it feels very in their body, and they become highly associated to all of these different sensations in their body. But I would say probably 75 to 80 percent of the time, a big part of it is some combination of either visual visualization and or dialogue. Usually 75 to 80 percent of people are going to have those two ingredients as big ingredients. OK, so if I've got a brand new client and what I learn through this first session. So basically what we do is we always set up a very first session. I usually spend 60 to 90 minutes with that person. And what we do is we unpack their entire pattern. So what I'll do is I'll say, hey, describe to me when you typically feel anxious. And this is what you want to be thinking of, by the way, if you're going to try to guide yourself through this process as opposed to working with us. I'm trying to give you as much detail as I can so that if you're really hell bent on doing this on your own, you have a basic sense of the steps of how to do it. So basically what I do is I ask people, OK, tell me about the typical type of time when you feel anxious and they may say well every time i go to drive to work i start getting really anxious about you know having a panic attack and getting in a car wreck and what i'll do in that very first session is i'll say okay great close your eyes for a second and put yourself back in that moment so that we can kind of recreate that pattern and so i'll ask them were you visualizing something was there dialogue going on what specific words were you asking yourself what were you visualizing were you visualizing it first person or third person? Was it color? Was it black and white? Okay, and it, we'll go through all of these details, all of these questions. But basically what we're trying to do is a process we call pattern mapping. So step one, if I want to help this person break anxiety out of their life, we first of all have to figure out, well, what type of anxiety do you have, right? Like when you're feeling anxiety, what is it that your nervous system is doing? What is the unique pattern that is necessary for you to feel anxious? And so what I will do very often with a client on their very first session is let's say that they, they visualize themselves getting in a car wreck first person. So they imagine themselves inside of their own body having that car accident. They visualize it as a movie as opposed to a still image. And maybe they uh, visualize it, say, like in color as opposed to black and white, and they visualize it happening over and over and over again. Okay. What I will then now know is I will know the default processing system for their nervous system. Their nervous system will process things visually first. They will imagine the future taking place in a visual format, color, first person, repetitively. So then what I will do is I'll say, okay, great. Now we're going to try something new. I want you to visualize yourself getting in the car and going to the grocery store and it being effortless and fun and easy. And imagine it first person, like really imagine you're in your body and it's taking place like that and play it like a movie, play it over and over and over again. And I shit you not, you might have a tough time believing this, but 99 times out of 100, when I have people do this, so long as I'm giving them instructions of what to do that matches up with what their default pattern is, but now we're getting them to imagine the future going how they want it to go, they will feel huge levels of con content and confidence and relief. Okay? The challenge, of course, is that their mind will have the default pattern conditioned as the default. So if I get them on the very first session to access a state of contentedness or confidence by changing the pattern, that's great, but that's not enough because it's not automatic. It's not by default. That will only make them feel good in the moment. Okay. Now, to give you a different example that's not visual, because I know some of you guys are hearing this and you're like, well, I don't visualize things. Gotcha. I got you covered. Don't worry. We map out the specific pattern that is unique to every single person. So the, the second most common type of person is someone who has dialogue primarily. And so what I'll do is I'll say, okay, gotcha. When you were feeling anxious, driving your car to the grocery store, what exactly were you saying to yourself? Okay. 
And by the way, I'm walking you through, if you're not really like leaning on the edge of your seat and paying close attention, now's the time because I'm kind of giving you the keys to the kingdom. I'm kind of walking you through, here's exactly what I would do with you on session number one, right? Obviously there's a lot more detail in a 90 minute first session with a client. But if you're going to try to do this on your own, these are kind of the questions you need to be asking yourself. You have to map out your pattern, your specific pattern, or else you're not going to have a chance in hell in changing it. I can guarantee you that. So let's, you know, that person may be very dialogue focused. So what they may find is that there are three or four specific phrases that they use each and every time that they drive that make them feel anxious. They may use those uh, phrases in a very high volume. They will typically repeat those phrases again and again, and they will usually have a very specific tone that they use those phrases in that induces anxiety. Those are the big characteristics that you want to be looking out for if you find yourself to be highly susceptible to dialogue. And as I mentioned, a very small portion of the population is very kinesthetic. So they're really focused primarily on the, the sensations in their body. But I will tell you, even if that is the case, you usually also have visualization and or dialogue going on at the same time, okay? But the big thing with the physical part is I will ask them to take notice of, okay, well, whenever you get anxious, what do you do with your physical body? right? Do you hunch over? Do you tighten your breathing? Do you clench your jaw? Do you fidget in a particular way? And there are like six or seven big things that we look for, but those are some of the big ones. And what I will do on my very first session with people is I will say, okay, I want you to visualize something going badly and use these particular words and do them in this dialogue and this volume and this tone and I want you to, you know, hunch over and, you know, clench your, your muscle stuff like you said you did before. Basically, what we do is we try to recreate the old pattern to verify that we have gotten every single element of their pattern mapped out. So I'll only have, they'll only be feeling anxious for about 60 seconds. But we do that to verify that we really nailed the pattern, that we know exactly the step-by-step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step -by -step process that their nervous system goes into repetitively that we need to break. So that's the very first thing that we do. So we have to identify the old pattern. Now, step two, okay, phase one, step two, is we must then help that person interrupt that pattern, okay? Interrupt that pattern. And I'll go ahead and give you step three. So phase one, step three, is we must replace that pattern with a new pattern. So if their mind is consistently visualizing things going badly at the grocery store, we have to train the brain to visualize things going well at the grocery store. If they keep using three or four repetitive phrases that make them feel anxious, like, I'm going to die, it's all over, this is overwhelming, right? If they keep going into a series of particular phrases, and chances are you do, you probably are not consciously aware of most of them, okay? But usually people have between three and six. If they keep using those same incantations, those same language patterns over and over and over again as a pattern, as a habit, we have to replace those. We have to train the brain to use default positive thinking by default, not the whole fake it till you make it thing, but where they genuinely, the mind like spits out positivity by default, right? Where you feel it in your bones. So there's a whole range of things that has to happen to train the brain to, to do that. But a big part of it, as you might guess, is repetition. So we give people a tool. This is in lesson number two. Okay, so once we map out their pattern, we give them a tool we call the rumble strip. And the rumble strip is a really, really powerful tool for basically helping them about 10 to 12 times a day, stop and pause and redirect these three elements, what they're focusing on, what they're telling themselves, and what they're doing with their physical body, because those are the three things that comprise anxiety. So 10 times a day with this simple little trigger, this simple little process, right, that takes about 30 seconds, they're able to stop themselves in their tracks and redirect their pattern into a positive pattern. We call it the rumble strip because, you know, kind of like when you're driving on a highway, your mind, if your car slips out of the lane, you hit the rumble strip and the rumble strip gets you to stay in the lane. And that's what our mind does. If you're dealing with anxiety, what's happening is your mind is slipping into disempowering focuses, like imagining things going badly, for example. 
It's slipping into disempowering language, using bad language by default, because that's what it's used to. And it's slipping into disempowering physiology, which means you might hunch over, tense your breathing, tense your muscles, frown, do all these things that impact how you feel, because your brain and body are the same machine. And so if you are feeling anxious repetitively, consistently right now, it's because your mind is doing those three things in a disempowering way as a pattern. You have developed a pattern of doing those things a particular way that has become automatically conditioned in your nervous system. So we have to help you break that pattern and replace it. So you have to stop and pause and go, okay, well, what am I going to choose to focus on in this moment? What am I going to choose to make this mean? What am I going to choose to do with my physical body? So you have to bring awareness to it, interrupt it, and change it. Because you can't change something unless you bring awareness to it. So the rumble strip is a simple little process. But basically what we do is we help people learn how to 10 to 12 times a day stop and pause and redirect their thinking. And what this does is it basically like puts a scratch in the old CD, right? And every single time you scratch that old CD, the CD has a tougher time playing and so I shit you not, what ends up happening is if people really consistently apply this, like I have seen people do this in their very first week and reduce their anxiety by uh, like over 20% in their very first week. Now that's not typical. The typical client will usually reduce the anxiety by like 10%, five to 10% in their first week of using this, but it works. So if you can, if you're, if you're hell bent on doing this on your own, the bare minimum of what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to make yourself aware of your old patterns and become very piercingly aware of like, okay, well, what do I do that makes me feel anxious? Is it a visual thing? Is it an auditory thing? And get specific, like how do I visualize it? What kind of auditory thing do I do? Am I more susceptible to volume changes or tone? Am I more susceptible to visualizing things first person or third person, right? You have to figure that out. And that can be challenging to figure out on your own. That's why you know we're happy to help you. but. If that's how you want to do it on your own, then you're going to have to really map that whole process out. Then what you've got to do is once you've become fully aware of your old pattern, okay, you got to break that pattern and start to train the new pattern. Because I didn't really mention this point, but on the very first session we do with clients, we don't just help them map out like, hey, these are all the things that make you feel anxious. So stop doing these things. But what we also do on the very first session with them is I ask them like, hey, how do you really want to feel instead of anxious? And they'll usually say something like content or peace or calm or confident. And then I'll say, okay, great. Well, tell me a time when you really felt that way in the past. And what I'll do is I have this little guided process. I take them through where in a matter of three minutes, we can map out very specifically how to recreate that feeling in their brain whenever they want by focusing on something very specific, by using very specific words in a particular volume or whatever their particular pattern is, holding their body a certain way. We map out like the nine to 12 different things that dramatically and substantially make them feel exactly how they wanna feel. It's like having the formula, right? Like, so on the very first session, what they're able to do is I teach them how to go from totally anxious to totally content in the very first session. Right. The trick, of course, is then how to train it and condition it to be default and by automatic. OK, so is this all kind of making sense for you guys so far? I hope uh, let me know in the comments if you got questions and I'm going to answer questions, hopefully kind of as we go. I'm not seeing any in there so far, but I'll, if this is helpful, I'll keep going. OK, so that's basically like that's only day number one. Right. Day number one is let's cut right to the chase. Let's help you figure out every single button in your brain that's making you feel anxious and all of the buttons that you need to push to feel how you wanna feel. And then we give you a simple little process that you use every single day to stop doing the stuff that makes you feel anxious and start doing the stuff that makes you feel how you wanna feel. But that's kind of the bare minimum of what you're gonna to need to do, whether you work with us or not to get this job done, okay? So I wanna make sure that that's clear for you. Okay, now that basically covers phase one, but I'm gonna show you here real quick. So inside of our modules, uh, when clients are going through a process, they're working with me directly one-on-one, -on -one, and then they're also going through educational modules or these courses and classes. And so in each module corresponds to a week in the program. So 
There are, are nine total modules. It's meant to get completed in about 10 weeks, nine to 10 weeks. And then that gives us about you know two to three additional weeks just to really make sure that everything is really sinking in, uh, that we really have the relapse prevention figured out and, and all of that good stuff. And so once we do that pattern mapping process, the very first uh, three weeks, one, module one, module two, especially, are all about you getting to know the user's manual for your own brain. You getting to know every single little lever and button in your brain that impacts your anxiety levels. So for example, if you're a very dialogue focused person, what I would do is we walk you through a series of processes to help you figure out, okay, are you super susceptible to volume changes in the dialogue? And we show you, here's how to reduce the volume of the negative dialogue. We give you strategies for that. If you're highly susceptible to the tone of the internal dialogue, a lot of people, their anxiety level will get to like a nine or 10 uh, if the dialogue fires off in a very particular tone. But if we train you how to change the tone of the dialogue, it evaporates to like a two or three. So we walk you through each one of these little bite-sized tiny experiments to figure out exactly what kind of brain you have, what kind of pattern of anxiety you have, what your particular pattern is, and then exactly what type of buttons you need to push to feel how you want to feel. So it's like very direct, it's very specific, it's very kind of piece by piece, but you come away from it like knowing for sure, like, holy cow, I know exactly what I need to not do and exactly what I need to do in order to feel how I want to feel. So you'll see that a lot of this stuff here in module one, right? So we, we do number one, lesson one is the three causes of all emotions. Lesson two is the rumble strip I just told you about. Lesson three is how to ensure your success in the program. Lesson four is basically creating a schedule to make sure you go through the course and complete it. Lesson five is about the power of conditioning, basically like getting you out of the coping mindset and helping you learn that if you really want to have the mental health you really, really deserve to have, you got to embrace a conditioning mindset. That's the key that you've been missing uh, all along. And actually, there's two other keys, too, but this is the first key that you've been missing. Okay, then we go through, um, you know, exactly how to make sure that you truly achieve mastery with the process. We give you a simple little guided uh, meditation, basically, that has been uh, one of the favorite things that our clients have told us they really, really love. We give you that in the very first module. Um, this is one of the resources that we said we've actually offered for free. Um, and so uh, basically, it helps rewire your brain for you. So it can kind of help for people who are having a lot of difficulty with learning how to do it on their own. So that's module one, that's week number one. Okay, module two, okay, is basically where we start to get into more detail. We wanna make sure that we don't just give you the three basic things that will reduce your anxiety. We are trying to now go from that five to 10% anxiety reduction we got in week one, and now we wanna ramp that up to like a 10 or a 15 to 20% anxiety reduction in like week two and three. So to do that, what we really have to do is we have to dig in on the specific characteristics of your pattern. So let me give you an example of this, okay? So like on the very first session with this hypothetical client, I'm talking about who has anxiety about driving and anxiety about being in a grocery store. The very first thing I would tell them on day one is, okay, look, your mind is imagining a future outcome going how you don't want it to go, and that's not helpful. So what I want you to do is whenever you notice that your mind is imagining the future going how you don't want it to go, you're going to stop and you're going to pause and you're going to train yourself to imagine that future outcome going how you do want it to go. Okay, now that is very basic and very general, but that would be like day number one of what they need to do. And that's what they would need to practice that first week, among other things. Okay, but you can see it's kind of general advice that would work for just about everybody. Now, Week two is where we really start applying each of those little nitty gritty characteristics, okay? So, okay, you, your particular pattern is you visualize it this particular way. So instead, let's train the brain to visualize it this particular way. Uh, or, oh, you have this particular dialogue in this type of volume. So here's a strategy to make sure the volume goes down automatically whenever the negative thoughts occur. So you can see here, for those of you who can see my screen, lesson 10, 
is talking about this concept that we call the triad, these three things that impact your anxiety, what you focus on, lang the language that you're using, and then your physical body. And we expand that concept into more detail, more nuance, and customize it so that you know exactly what works for you. So we dig in on the visual stuff in lesson 11, lesson 12, we give you a process to break apart any old nasty visualizations that seem to not be going away, particularly if you've had any traumatic experiences that are causing repeat visualizations, then that's exactly what we, we will take you through a guided process to handle that for you basically to make sure that those go away. So that's in lesson 12. Lesson 13 is all about uh, internal dialogue, right? And what we've called incantations. So we help you identify what are your three to six biggest internal dialogue cues that are ramping your anxiety up that you're totally not even aware of at a conscious level. They're happening at a subconscious level. Uh, usually you'll be aware of the first like one or two. So we help you identify like all six or more that are causing you problems in lesson 13. In lesson 14, what we do is we basically break down, if you do have dialogue problems, we walk through the three types of internal dialogue that cause anxiety. We call them the three main mental distortions. Okay, sorry about that. My fancy little light just dropped on me. Okay, and uh, basically we help you figure out what type of dialogue is empowering, what type of dialogue is disempowering, which, what are the three most anxiety inducing types of dialogue to avoid. So that's what we cover in lesson 14. Lesson 15 is all about poisonous vocabulary. There are five unique phrases that are the highest anxiety inducing phrases in the human language. So we help you identify what those are and learn how to remove and replace those as patterns and as habits. Uh, lesson 16 is called the power of questions. So basically, if you're having anxiety, what is probably happening for you is your mind is asking itself a series of questions habitually. So we have to identify what each one of those questions are that's causing you a problem if we want to get rid of those. It could be something like, why does this always happen to me? Or what could go wrong? Or um, just frankly, why? A lot of you guys who have health anxiety are asking yourself the question, why, 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 over and over again. And that's an anxiety inducing question. So we basically cover in lesson 17, the most common anxiety inducing questions that you need to break a habit of using. In lesson 18, we cover the common depression inducing questions that you need to avoid. Uh, and that covers the first half of module two. We then go into lesson 19, which is the daily conditioning questions. So basically what questions do you wanna feed your mind to train your brain to ask the right questions and come up with the right answers and focus on the right things. So we give you a simple little process that you use every single day, it takes about 10 minutes a day, uh, that helps you literally rewire the brain to think positively by default. This, by the way, we have a version of this lesson as a free ebook. So if any of you guys want that particular lesson as an ebook, let us know in the comments uh, and we will be happy to get that particular ebook out to you. But basically, uh, that one process in particular tends to help people go from the 10 to 20% anxiety reduction and ramps them up to like 25, 30% anxiety reduction. So that's a really, really powerful lesson that we've found works very well for people. Uh, kind of summing up a couple things here, uh, there we basically then get into further detail on the auditory stuff. So for the people who are consistently having nasty internal dialogue and they can't seem to get rid of it, we have a guided little process that rewires the brain for you. So that's really powerful for people who have nasty dialogue that keeps coming back. And then for the people who don't identify as having visualization or dialogue, but they have more kinesthetic anxiety, we then go through all of the nuanced detail to help them learn how to break that pattern apart too, okay? The final lesson in module two is lesson 25, which is called the death spiral, which is really about if you have anxiety attacks or panic attacks, uh, how, what is the three phases of what causes that and then how to reverse that. Uh, but basically in effect, the process that we teach clients to do to minimize those uh, comes back to that rumble strip idea. So 10 to 12 times a day, stopping and pausing and getting them to break the old pattern before it has a chance to really grow and expand and then redirect their mind into the more empowered pattern. Okay? 
And that covers the first two out of nine uh, modules, right? And so by this point, you, whether you're doing this on your own or with us, right? What would end up happening is you would know your very specific pattern, what to do, uh, or excuse me, what not to do, what to do, and you would be actively daily shifting each one of those three main things that's causing you anxiety, right? The, um, the what your mind focuses on repetitively, the language that your mind uses regularly, and then what you do with your physical body. That's all anxiety is, is just those three things. So if we break those patterns and replace them, then you're well on your way. Okay, now module three and module four is basically like we call this, I like to think of this as like your menu of having whatever mental health you want. And so what I mean by that is module three, we call it ac accessing resourceful emotions, part one. And so inside of this, right, we've got uh, from the very beginning, we've got stress and procrastination versus motivation and follow through. So for every single lesson, what I do is I take all of the common negative emotions that people hate to feel and I break down the exact specific pattern of what you have to do inside of the human nervous system to activate that negative emotion. And then I contrast that by walking through, here's exactly what to do to feel the opposite. So we have stress and procrastination versus motivation and follow through. And each one of those has three ingredients, right? So what I do is I walk through, okay, here's what the human brain has to focus on to feel stressed and to procrastinate. Here's the type of dialogue that we have to use inside of our mind to stress and procrastinate. Here's what we have to do with our physical body to stress and procrastinate. Here's what we have to focus on to feel instant motivation, right? And so it's like identifying that big button on the brain that you didn't even know you had the ability to push to feel how you want to feel. Here's the dialogue that will make you feel motivated that you can install and use right away. You can just swipe it and deploy it, right? And then here's the things you can do, the, the five or six things you can change about your physical body, how you're using your physical body to feel motivation and follow through. And so basically what we're doing through this module is I'm taking all of the thousands of conversations I've had with people over the past seven years of my career and distilling them into, hey, here's exactly what works for the majority of people. Try this, and then let's customize it for you. And so what this enables people to do is they can come into the program and they can see, okay, well, I'm dealing with, I'm not dealing with stress and procrastination, but I am dealing with anger, right? So you can see we have a lesson on anger and trauma versus feeling love and feeling healing. We've got anxiety versus confidence. We've got depression versus joy. We've got some low self-esteem versus high self-esteem. Uh, grief versus moving on past the grief. Uh, dealing with substance use and bad habits versus healthy habits. So basically I walk through every single thing that could possibly be bothering you. The next one is uh, bipolar. And we even get into more nuanced stuff in module four, like um, for people who've got flashbacks or traumas, people who are dealing with agoraphobia, people who have OCD, people who are, have depersonalization, people who've got derealization, people who um, are dealing with mood swings, right? So it's all here. So that way, whatever your particular flavor of anxiety is, we can help you map out the exact pattern that's going to make you crazy and the exact pattern that will make you feel how you want to feel. And then we give you very simple, you know, three steps of how to start conditioning them. So I'm going through all this in detail because what I want you to understand is if you've been struggling with anxiety and you've been spinning your wheels, it's because you haven't properly, properly, excuse me, done these three parts of phase one. You either haven't identified what your old pattern is very thoroughly. Like you might be aware of one or two things like, yeah, I do visualize things or yeah, I do have bad self-talk, but you don't know like all of the intricacies of what's causing you to feel anxious. And until you know every single element of your pattern, you're only ever going to use strategies that reduce your anxiety by like 10 to 20% and that barely last for like long long term. They will only work in the moment that you use them. This is why most of you have uh, done like meditation or journaling or yoga or physical exercise or therapy or medication 
and it will work while you're doing it. But then, you know, after a little while, you know, a couple hours or a couple days later, you're not feeling good anymore. And it's because you didn't isolate every single thing that was fish hooking you back into the old way of doing things. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody where they're like, yeah, you know, I've been going through therapy for 10 years and I've really, really worked hard on my self-talk and, you know, really being like more positive towards myself. And I am feeling better, but I still really have some really serious anxiety. And then I'll do this pattern mapping process with them. And I'll be like, well, yeah, you figured out the dialogue part mostly, but you didn't figure out that you're visualizing these five things and that you're doing these seven things with your physical body. And you're focusing on these three things right here that also make you feel anxious. So that's why you only reduce the anxiety by 30%. So this is very often why people have been stuck in the coping mode because they never really had the step-by-step -step intricacies of like how to map out every single cause of the anxiety. And that's what I wanna be very clear with you on, whether you're gonna go it alone or get help, you must do this as my sincere belief anyway, is you must do phase one, which is retrain the brain and to retrain the brain to think positively and feel content by default, you must do these three steps inside of phase one, which is number one, identify every single intricate part of your old pattern. Number two, consistently interrupt that old pattern when it takes place. Number three, replace that old pattern with a new pattern that is more empowering and more powerful okay, by default. Must do that. Okay, I'm going to check for questions and take a very quick drink of water while I get ready to explain phase two. Now would be a good time to put in questions. Thanks for the feedback, Karen. I know you did great in the program. Uh, question from Deb. All of this works with anxiety, but what if you happen to have anxiety along with depression and borderline? Do you ever do anything related to the other two or just anxiety? Yes. So Deb, that's why I was just trying to show you. And if you access the replay of this video, you'll be able to see each one of the lesson titles. But we literally have, I think, 20 or more individual breakdowns of every single like ev basically every type of mental health problem that exists under the sun, I have handled at least several dozen times with people because almost everybody who's dealing with anxiety is dealing with something else as well. So we want to make sure that we comprehensively handle that. But yeah, all of those things uh, can be handled. What you're calling borderline personality disorder is also just a pattern. Okay, so there's a very particular pattern of something you focus on, some type of language that you're using and then something you're doing with your physical body. So the pattern mapping process would apply just as well to you. Uh, and by the way, this pattern mapping process I've used with all sorts of people with all sorts of mental health issues. The reason I talk about anxiety so much is just because that's the like main type of clientele that we try to service are, are people with anxiety challenges, but we can help anybody with any mental health issue. And we have done so several dozen or several hundred times, depending on what it is. All right, moving on to phase two. Okay, you guys ready for phase two? Can I see, can you put phase two in the comments if you're ready for phase two? Okay, I told you there's three phases and inside of each phase, there are three steps if you really want to overcome anxiety inside of 90 days. So let me see it in the comments. Now phase two, okay, is we have to handle the anxiety from the root source. We must, we must handle the anxiety from the root source. And again, this comes with three main steps. And so inside of our curriculum, we're now moving into module five. So this would be like week five or month two, basically. So month one, your number one priority for the first 30 days is let's reduce that anxiety by at least 25%. Let's help you learn to take back control over what you focus on, what you tell yourself and what you do with your physical body. Let's break the old habits and get you the new empowering habits that will actually serve you and help you. That's number one. Phase two is the fun stuff. This is where we actually get to the real root of the issue, the underlying deep-rooted subconscious garbage that has been baggage for you that you've been holding on to for however long you've been dealing with anxiety. Now, there's two types of people I'm speaking to right here, okay? So the first type of people, probably about two-thirds of the people of you listening, have been dealing with anxiety for what we would consider to be a very long period of time. Uh, like over 10 years, or maybe like since childhood, or many of you might think like basically your whole life, okay? That's one group of people. The other group of people is you've been dealing with anxiety 
ever since like an isolated incident. So maybe you had like a car accident or you got unwell or you got a job loss or a person died or something like that in your family. Usually it's because something like sudden and unexpected and painful occurred and you've had anxiety ever since. Either way, phase two applies, but just slightly differently, okay? So I'm primarily going to talk to the people who've been dealing with anxiety for a long period of time. But if you've only been dealing with it for like a couple of months or a year or a couple of years, like hang with me because this applies just the same. So what we have to do in phase two is we have to, let me just kind of list out the steps and then I'll kind of explain this. So the thing that we have to do firstly, so this would be 2A, is we have to identify every conflict in your model of the world that currently exists. Okay, a different way of saying that would be we have to identify every conflict that exists in your current belief systems, okay? Phase, or excuse me, step two of phase two, so 2B, is we must then eliminate and dismantle all of those limiting beliefs that are hiding out at a subconscious level. And then step three, of phase two, so 2C, is we must create and integrate new empowering belief systems or what we call a new model of the world. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. So in module five, week five, what we have to do is we have to help you figure out where did your anxiety come from in the first place? Okay, now a lot of people will say, oh, it came from my childhood. Okay, sure, yeah, but where and why and how? And the short version of this, okay, is that there was a person, one of your parents or one of your parent figures that you craved love from the most. It would have been more than likely the parent who gave you the least amount of love between the two. So think about who that would be. And then what you want to think about is, okay, who did I believe I had to be in order to get that person's love? And there are common answers. So as you can see here, right, we kind of give an initial breakdown of the model of the world. And then the very first lesson is, whose love did you crave more? And then what we explain is that there are archetypes. There are basically different roles that you would have potentially adopted of who you thought you had to be in order to get that parent's love. And that is probably a big source of your anxiety if you've been dealing with it for a really, really long period of time. A couple examples of these negative archetypes would be trying to be a people pleaser, right? So you may have learned at a young age that if you don't do what makes mom or dad happy, you're going to get punished. And your job is to make them happy and keep them happy at all costs. So that's what you do, right? So you do everything in your power to try to people please. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And most of your anxiety will probably stem from the inability to people please in a whole variety of situations. Uh, another example would be the perfectionist. You're trying to be perfect all the time. There's the achiever. There's trying to be the strong kid. There's trying to be the comedian. There's trying to be the judge. Um, so there's all these different archetypes, right? And so it's important to figure out which one was yours and what role, what set of beliefs you have about who you have to be that keeps clashing with reality. Because if you're dealing with anxiety in the long term and you have since childhood, I would bet you my bottom dollar, it's because you developed a set of beliefs about who you have to be and how the world has to be. And those beliefs keep clashing with life. They not, they keep not matching up with life. So you either keep getting anxious and upset with yourself because you're not meeting your own expectations, or you keep getting upset with the outside environment or other people in your life because they are not doing what you believe they must do in order for you to feel okay. And so you feel very reactive to the outside world and or to other people. And if that's the problem, that means that you have a model of the world that is never gonna match up with reality unless we update the model of the world. It's like having a computer and all of a sudden the computer starts to glitch. It doesn't mean you need to throw the whole computer out. It just means you need a software update. And if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're having a tough time functioning in your daily life, that means you're glitching right? Your old way of looking at the world is glitching. It's not working. It's not gelling with reality, okay? And so what we have to do is we have to resolve those conflicts. We first of all have to identify every single limiting belief that exists in your nervous system. Now, the way that we do that is I take about a 90 minute to two hour process with our clients over the phone 
And I literally map it out for them. I ask them a series of questions so they don't have to think about it too hard. And we map out every single conflicting belief that they have ever had that is causing them anxiety currently. And that list can range from being like 10 to like 100, right? And But the important thing is we map out every single one because if we don't map out every single one, if we get rid of two or three limiting beliefs, that might be a good start, but then you might still relapse, right? So we have to get, we have to identify all of them. And then the next step is we take them through a very specific process to eliminate those limiting beliefs. So um, you can see on the screen here, right? We we go, go through, okay, this is where the source of all your intrusive thoughts are coming from, and that's your beliefs. We talk about the different types of beliefs, including your values, your rules, your identity beliefs. We walk through the whole process of how to identify all of the different limiting beliefs. And then we walk through a process of evaluating your old beliefs. So we help you figure out which ones were really, really problematic versus which ones do you not even really need to worry about. Like what were the core top three beliefs that were causing 90% of your anxiety? That's what we want to make sure you get clear on through this process so that that way we know where to focus your efforts and it doesn't become overwhelming, but it's super duper simple to tackle those big beliefs that would be call, causing anxiety. One of those, an example of those big beliefs might be like, number one, uh, I need to be perfect or else I'm not good enough. Or number two, I need to constantly be achieving things or else I'm not good enough. Or number three, now I'm talking to the people who have had anxiety for a shorter period of time now. Almost certainly you developed anxiety around either one of two things, either one, it was around certainties. So like something unexpected and painful happened in your life that you never want to have happen again. And you developed a subconscious belief that says, I need to be certain, I need to be in control. And so you keep feeling this anxiety because you keep trying to be in control of things that you're never going to be in control of. You keep trying to feel certain of things you're never going to feel certain of. And so the core belief that we have to dismantle is the belief of I must be certain or else I won't be able to feel peace of mind. The other type of big belief that could be causing you problems is a belief around whether you're good enough or not. So maybe you had a divorce or a breakup or a layoff or, um, you know, like one of your children stopped contacting you or something like that. And now all of a sudden you're having all this anxiety and you're having all these thoughts and concerns about whether you're good enough or not, whereas before it wasn't so much of a problem. So at the core, there are beliefs about either I need to be more certain than I'm ever going to be or I need to feel more good enough. I need to feel good enough by getting proof from things that are outside of my control that I'm currently getting. And we have to dismantle that. We have to put you back in charge, which brings us to step three of phase two, which is to create a new set of beliefs and to integrate it so it feels very true and that it replaces the old way of being. This is how I've been able to stay anxiety and depression free for just about 15 years now is I created a totally new way of looking at the world and I conditioned it and trained it. And now it is what I believe. It's how I look at the world. It's no longer, it's not this fake it till you make it bullshit. It's like how I really feel and what I really believe. And that brings us into module seven. So module five is let's figure out all your old limiting beliefs. Module six is all about let's eliminate those limiting beliefs. And module seven is all about how do we create your new model of the world? How do we create your new beliefs that will enable you to feel like you are winning the game of life on your own terms? That will enable you to feel like you get to feel happy whenever you want, not necessarily just when things that are outside of your control go how you would prefer. And so we just walk you through exactly step by step what to do here. I'm not going to, I mean, there's no real way for me to like summarize every single thing, but I will tell you for the folks of you guys who are listening, who you know, are going to decide that you're not going to end up working with us. It's totally cool. No problem whatsoever. But I will tell you, here's what you really got to understand. You got to do these three steps of phase two. You must figure out, you must, whether you're going to work with us or somebody else or do it on your own, you have to figure out every single limiting belief that is causing you anxiety. And I got to tell you, 90% of them are subconscious, which makes it tough to figure those out. Okay. But you can do it. Step two is you must you must find a process to dismantle or eliminate those limiting beliefs. We have a process that we teach. It's not the only process that's out there. I think it's the best. Personally, I'm a little biased, but um, there are 
a couple other ways that you can tackle it. You know, theoretically, you can do it even just by changing your language and how you talk to yourself if you do it over a long enough period of time. And then the third step inside of phase two is you have to create and integrate new beliefs that reduce anxiety and create peace and calm. Okay, that is critical. Now, once we've done phase one and phase two, even though I'm kind of chunking this up into three phases, I got to tell you, phase one and phase two are probably 80% of the work. Because if we really do phase one and phase two, right, then phase three is pretty much a breeze, but it is still very important and very, very important. Okay, if you guys are ready for phase three, just go ahead and put phase three in the comments for me, please. Okay, so phase three is we must develop a bulletproof, customized relapse prevention plan for you. Okay, we have to have a bulletproof relapse prevention plan that is customized specifically for you and your nervous system and your life and your lifestyle. A lot of times people relapse because either A, they don't have a system at all, B, they don't understand the four causes of relapses, C, they do have a relapse prevention plan, but it's not highly customized to them. So it doesn't really work in the long term. Those are kind of the big problem areas. And so that's a problem that we have to fix, okay? If you're really serious about getting rid of the anxiety for good, you're gonna have to master this third and final phase. And inside of this third and final phase, there are three basic steps, okay? The first step is simple. We have to get you a daily conditioning routine to keep yourself on track. Now, when we do this with our clients, again, this is all premeditated based off of what their particular pattern is what their target state is. So what they tell us they want to replace the anxiety with, right? So for example, I'm not gonna give the same daily routine to somebody who wants to feel peace compared to someone who wants to feel confident compared to someone who wants to feel motivated. They're different, right? So we gotta make sure that's customized based off of their goals. And so that's a really key thing. And then we gotta make sure that that daily routine is uh, able to be done within a 15 minute window or shorter. So usually about 10 minutes is what our typical client ends up spending per day for maintenance. And the way that you want to think about this is like your brain is just like your body. It's a muscle. Your brain gets trained, right? And right now your brain has gotten trained by default to think anxiously. The only difference is you haven't learned how to train your brain purposefully and intentionally. And that's the key thing that we teach you how to do, or that you can learn how to teach yourself how to do, right? And, um, the key, okay, with this relapse prevention plan is, again, it's customized, it's based off of your target state, and it's based off of your nervous system. So for some people, their daily routine might include a visualization element. For some people, their daily routine might include a dialogue element. For some people, they may respond really well to written, like we've got lots of written conditioning exercises. We have guided conditioning exercises, right? We have to do experimentation, basically, to figure out what your nervous system responds super well to. But after doing this hundreds and hundreds of times, it becomes pretty easy to kind of guess and test and then iterate and like perfect it to make it work exactly well for you. But the key thing I want you to guys to understand, okay, whether you're going to work with us or somebody else is totally cool. It doesn't matter. But the thing you got to understand, I really believe in my heart and in my bones, is if you really want to live a life without anxiety, you must have a daily routine that conditions the brain to think positively and to feel content by default, not a coping routine, okay? Coping routines are where you are simply responding to the pattern. You're kind of like hoping and praying that the pattern doesn't show up again. A conditioning routine is one where the more you do it, the easier it gets, okay? That's the key. So it's just like building a muscle. If you want to maintain muscle mass, you got to go to the gym. Now, once you work your butt off to get the muscle mass, it's a lot easier to maintain the muscle mass once you've got it. Okay. And that's a key thing to understand too. So once we get people to this stage, it's a lot easier to maintain. It. So you got to have that. Uh, 3B. So this is phase three, step B, is if you really want to prevent relapses, Okay, you must absolutely have a process to handle problems and curveballs without having anxiety. Okay, because this is where I got to be a bit of a realist with you. Like one of the things we pride ourselves on with our program is like our program is not about trying to convince you like, hey, the world is sunshine and rainbows and just be grateful all the time and 
you know, it's all great. Just be in this angelic, beautiful state and like align your chakras. Like, no, I am fundamentally a realist. Every single thing we teach is based in practicality. It's based on what works, right? Every single freaking thing that we teach is hard hitting, practical, step-by-step -step stuff. And we want to prepare clients to be able to maintain an anxiety-free lifestyle. Remember, a capital A, anxiety-free lifestyle, long-term. And in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to make sure, let me find it. Where is it? Um, okay, so it's in module nine. So in module nine, we have to make sure that we teach you how to handle problems and curveballs without relapsing and without having anxiety because they're going to happen. So one of the things that we teach is that you're going to have a crisis. It is going to pop up like you are going to have. Uh, a death in the family eventually. You are your physical health is going to change eventually. If you have kids, your kids are going to run into issues. Your car is going to break down. So, you know, eventually, like this stuff is going to happen. Okay, these are the two laws of the universe. Everything changes and everything ends. And if you really want to be able to maintain an anxiety-free lifestyle long term, you've got to be prepared for how to handle that. So as you can see on the screen here in module nine, we cover all of the bases. So we go through, these are the four causes of all relapses and how to prevent them in lesson 74. In lesson 75, we go through your daily freedom routine. Here's the exact routine to maintain an anxiety-free lifestyle. Number 76 is how to handle problems and curveballs. 77 is how to handle feeling stuck. 78 is how to have a, we call it your global solution. So what is the singular thing that you need to remind yourself of at any moment in order to snap yourself out of anxiety? We help you map that out. So it's super, super simple. And you can remind yourself that within two seconds. Uh, lesson 79, we talk about when is it okay to feel anxiety and when should you let yourself feel anxiety because you don't want to make the anxiety worse. And when is it, a, when is it actually therapeutic and healthy to feel anxiety? Number eight, or excuse me, 80, lesson 80, we basically go through an exercise of like, what could screw this up? Like, what is every single thing that could screw this up? And how do we come up with a plan to make sure that that does not happen? So we make sure that no stone is left unturned to make sure that there's no chance of a relapse. Lesson number 81 is creating what we call your new life map, which is basically a singular PDF document that has all of the key tools that you've learned that will keep you on track, all of the things that you need in order to stay on the right path. Lesson 82 is called putting it all together. And uh, as you can see too, we, we provide video transcripts for all of these. So for those of you who like to read as you listen or who just prefer to read, you can do that also. We also have lesson summaries at the end of every single lesson to distill the key points. Uh, we have real world examples of like, here's how to apply every single strategy. We have frequently asked questions. Here's the frequently asked questions with each lesson. And here's what to do um, along with the transcript and then the key points. So it's all laid out very simple. And then uh, finally, we map out in the final lesson, 84, what are your next steps for ongoing growth? Which really leads me to the third and final step of phase three, which is you must make small daily progress in the six areas of life mastery if you want to maintain a relapse prevention record and you want to make sure you live a life without ongoing relapses. So the six areas of life mastery are your emotions, your relationships, your physical health, your finances, your sense of career and or mission, uh, and then finally, uh, your time and your habits. So you just need to have something where you are making some tiny small progress in one or more of those areas each and every day. And that's where we, you know, when we give you the daily routine to do, you end up hitting all six of those areas immediately within 30 minutes a day. So you end up doing great. The reason why this is so critical, by the way, guys, this is one of the key points I'll leave you with today is progress equals happiness. If you're not feeling happy, if you're feeling stuck, if you're dealing with anxiety and you're dealing with depression, I guarantee you it's because you're not making progress in one or more of those six areas that I just said. People who feel like they're making consistent progress in those six areas do not have anxiety or depression, really. And so what we make sure that we do is we provide all of that for people so that they know exactly what to do to break through in their relationships and their finances and their career. We provide all those in bonus classes. Uh, we have our financial anxiety eliminator we give people for free, 
our relationship mastery course we give people for free, and then our um, overwhelm and elimination class we give people for free too. So that way your time and habits are handled, your career and mission is handled, your relationships are handled, it's all handled, right? So you'll know by the time you're done in 90 days exactly what to do every single day to make progress. But I'm sharing all that with you in detail because if you decide to work on your own or work with somebody else, I'm telling you those are the things you got to figure out how to make progress on. Those are the things you're going to need to have a system to make progress on. You don't work with us. Totally cool. No problem. I'm not offended by that. We're pretty full on clients regularly anyway. I'm just telling you, these are the things you have to do if you want to eliminate anxiety. So let me run through them all one last time. There's three phases. There's three steps within each phase. Phase one, you have to learn how to retrain the brain to think positively and feel content by default. And that means you must 3A, so step one of phase three, you must identify every single micro pattern is what we call them. Every single micro pattern of what causes you anxiety currently or whatever you call it, bipolar, uh, borderline, right? Depression, whatever. We have to map out every single part of your pattern. Step two of phase one is we must interrupt that pattern. We must get the brain to scratch that old CD until the CD gets spit out, right? We have to break that old pattern. And then step three of phase one is we must replace that old pattern with a new pattern that we have already verified your nervous system responds to, to feel what you want to feel, to feel your target state, okay? Step two, or excuse me, phase two, is we must handle the anxiety from the root source, which is your belief system. So step one of phase two is we have to identify every single limiting belief and conflicting belief that is causing you anxiety, every single conflict in your model of the world. Step two of phase two is we must then eliminate every single one of those beliefs. We have a process. I like to call this the process I teach the shovel because it's like taking a shovel to the garden and digging the weeds out of the garden. Right? There's no way you can have a beautiful, luscious, prosperous garden if you got a shit ton of weeds in it. So we have to get rid of the weeds. We have to pull out the anxious, negative thoughts. Okay, And there's a process to do that that works really well. Step three of phase two is we have to create and like as in design and then integrate as in condition a new model of the world, a new set of beliefs, a new set of ways of looking at the world that will enable you to feel happy on your own terms and be able to feel content consistently. Okay, and then phase three is you must have a bulletproof relapse prevention plan and system that is customized to you. And step one of phase three is you must have a simple daily conditioning routine. Just like if you wanna have really great physical health, you need to do something daily to improve your physical health. If you wanna have really good finances, you need a system to maintain good finances. If you want to have a good relationship, you got to have rituals that create and maintain a good relationship. So if you want to have great mental health long term, you got to have that daily routine dialed in to a T. We call it a daily freedom routine. You got to figure out what that is for you. Step two of phase three is you must learn a system for being able to handle problems and curveballs without relapsing. Uh, otherwise, it will be a source of relapses for you in the future. And then step three of phase three is you must learn to make small daily progress in each of the six areas of life that matter in a way that feels easy, effortless, simple, uh, and doable in a short period of time, right? And that's where the daily routine becomes really important. So I'm not saying this is the only way to overcome anxiety, although I kind of am saying that because this is the only way I know. So whether you're gonna tackle this alone, whether you're gonna get help, whether you're gonna try to work with somebody else, you know, this is what I believe you got to do. I tried to explain this in as absolute much detail as I could in the time limit I had today. I hope you guys got some value from this. I hope this kind of clears things up. Um, and then I want to let you guys know we are doing something special right uh, as of this month. And so many of you guys know that for the past year, uh, the way our program works is uh, our typical program anyway, is that I work with you as a client one on one to help you get the anxiety handled. And then we also give you access to uh, what you're seeing on this screen here, uh, which is all of the classes and you know all of the material, all of our group calls and all of these other bells and whistles that we give you to give you all of this support. And uh, for the last like year and a half, two years, we have provided the strongest 
written guarantee of satisfaction that I know of that exists in the mental health industry, which is that if you don't feel satisfied that you've reduced the anxiety by at least 75% in the first 90 days of us working together, then I'll keep working with you one-on-one -on -one for as long as it takes, so long as you follow all your instructions, right? So, so long as you follow the system, I'll work with you as long as it takes. And that has worked incredibly well. Um, about 80% of our clients get done in 90 days, no problem. And then the remaining 20% almost always get it wrapped up in four months. So that has worked out great. However, I know that for you guys, the decision of like what to do to really get your anxiety handled is a decision that you are taking like very heavily, like you do not take it lightly. And I know that for you, you've got a lot of concerns and fears and doubts of like, basically, like, how can I be sure? Like, how can I be 100% sure that this will work for me? Right? So even like, if you're listening to what I'm saying, and you've been like, wow, yeah, that makes sense. That's interesting. I, you probably there's a voice in your head that's still like, yeah, but can I be 100% sure it's going to work for me? And a lot of times we as individuals have a tendency to believe that we're special snowflakes where like, we like to think that, you know, oh, well, that works really great for all these other people, but it's not going to work for me. So I get it. Anyway, you've got doubts, you've got uncertainties. And the only way that you'd be able to get rid of those doubts and uncertainties is to just like use the system and verify that it works. Because if you use it and try it and it works, you'll know it works, right? And then there will be no doubt and you don't need to take my word for it. So we're doing something special as kind of an experiment for this upcoming month. And that is that we're gonna be taking on uh, 10 clients and because that's all I can take, that's the only amount I can take and make sure that they're all successful. But what we're doing is we're not just providing the guarantee that um, if you don't feel satisfied that you've reduced the anxiety by 75% in the 90 days that I'll keep working with you one-on-one -on -one for free. We're keeping that, but we're also adding another legally binding written guarantee that puts us, uh, like basically removes all of your risk. And that guarantee is that if you apply okay, this week, and you end up getting accepted to be a client for, you know, this month, then what will end up happening is you're going to have the ability to fully test out our system and before you commit. So basically what will happen is uh, you can apply. So you can go ahead and comment on this video. Just put the word apply if you want to be considered for this. And first come, first serve, we'll message you. And then, you know, um, if you get accepted, right, and you become a client, here's how it will work. First, I will do my very first like in-depth full session with you, the one I was describing at the beginning of this video. I'll do that with you to map out your pattern or you know whatever it is I feel is best for you. Uh, we like I will spend uh, at least a full you know uh, solid period of time making sure that we get you results in advance, right? Doing a very full session. And then also you're going to have access to our full curriculum, all of the lessons, everything. So you'll be able to go through the very first week of the program and you will, if you don't love like your very first session and your very first week of the program, like if you do not feel 100% sure that you're in the right hands and the right place at the, you know, at the right time or whatever, if you're not like blown away, if you don't feel like this was the best thing you ever did for your mental health, and this is like far better than the therapy and the medication and everything else you ever tried, if you're not blown away by it, then cool. You can totally walk away, no harm, no foul, no hard feelings, no money paid. Like we will happily make sure that you can walk away with no investment except the time that you put in to try the system, okay? So we're basically giving you a full seven days to try the whole system out before you commit. And uh, yeah, we're, we think that this should help for you guys because really this means there's no more excuses, right? Like if you're serious about getting the anxiety handled, you really have no more excuses because we're giving you the opportunity to literally try our process totally risk free. If you love it, cool, stick with us. And if you just and so if you stick with us after that seven days, then you're still guaranteed for me to work with you for as long as it takes to get the anxiety reduced to at least 75%. But if for any reason in that first week, like you're just not feeling it, like you don't think I'm the right guy for you or there, you think my method is just not quite the thing for you or whatever it is, like totally cool. You can totally walk away, no investment. It's all good. Like, and, and that's fine. But at least that way, you know, right? Uh, but the catch, there's two catches. Number one, I can only take on 10 clients. That's just the maximum I can take on. 
And we have tens of thousands of people who are seeing this right now. So if you want to be considered, just go ahead and put apply in the comments and uh, myself or a team member will reach out to you uh, via messenger and we'll book a quick little 10 minute call, make sure it's really a good fit, go over the details. As long as everything checks out, good to go, we'll get you up and running and we'll schedule your first session right away. Um, and then the only other catch, okay, is that you need to be someone who's actually serious about getting your anxiety handled. So do not take advantage of me and my team and our goodwill of wanting to make sure that you can test our system out for free. Like don't, don't, if you're the type of person that's really just trying to like extract as much free content as you possibly can, and you have no intention of becoming a client, even if you love what you see in the first week, then do not apply. But if you would really, really like to be a client, so long as you verify that it is a good fit and you love it and you're excited and it's working for you and the first week goes great, like if you would like to commit the 90 days so long as the first week goes great, then please do apply. But if you have no intention of like really being serious and buckling down to get this handled, even if you're thrilled with the initial results you get, don't apply. It's not for you, okay? But if you do want to apply, go ahead and put apply in the comments. We'll go ahead and help you out. Or if you have additional questions at all, just go ahead and put those in there and we'll make sure that we get to you. But I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, whether you work with us or somebody else, you got to do these three phases and these nine total steps. And uh, I just wanted to provide that for you because I hope you guys find your own path, whether it's working with us or somebody else. I want you to get the mental health you deserve. Uh, and if you're joining us on the podcast or on the YouTube video, uh, just go ahead and go to mentalhealthcoaching.com and you can apply by booking a call directly there. Okay. So we will see you guys next week. Take care for now. Bye.